Yeah. So hello well, and awesome. welcome to Big Ben and Kwin on NoFilter.net. Each week we broadcast live on NoFilter.net, Caffeine TV, and YouTube. This week we got a good one. The Robbie Rowe Show. This is like two years in the making. Big yeah. Ben could not attend because he's picking up his daughter. So it's just Kwin and this guy. Robbie Rowland. You know him from? He's a creator. He's an entrepreneur. He's a walking three-point bucket. He's Cloverdale's finest. And he is the number one source on the internet for pitching, instruction, and education. Robbie Rowe, welcome to the show. Holy smokes, dude. With that introduction, I'm ready to go drop a freaking 50-piece. Come on. Let's go. When's the game starting? Oh, right now. (laughs) me up. Shoot. No, oh, that was good, man. You, you've you've done this for a while now, huh? Shoot. Do what I can. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I'm actually really excited to sit here and talk with you, dude. It's been a while since we actually kind of shot. So I was uh, trying to think. So wait, you got drafted in 2010? Dude, are we going to go down this 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 time loop of just like how fast time goes? I, yeah, because I'm thinking it's Air Hoosiers had to be 2008 or 2009 summer? I say, yeah, I want to say 09 because I think I was going into my senior year. Yeah, 09. Oh, wow. The simpler times, huh? I know. A lot has changed and a lot is still similar. Yeah. Yeah, ain't that life, brother. But yeah, hey, it's good to see you. It's good to good to be on, man. Thank you for having me. I'm uh I'm excited. This is gonna be good. I'm just I'm pumped to see this 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 platform too, man. This is so cool. Technology. To have you so. We have you for about about thirty minutes, five four five thirty five ish. Yeah, let's just and let's we'll just get catch you on the second half. The <laughs> I didn't even know the Warriors game starts at five, dude. <sighs> so oh, we're, we're gonna get right into it, okay? I'm coming out with heat. Come on, come on, that's how we do. Come on, we're Hoosiers, man. I'm gonna give you a Major League Baseball starting pitcher, oh, no. and I want you to give me the first word that comes to your mind. Mm. Oh, okay. Wow, let's do it. Okay. Jared Jones, Pittsburgh. Oh, I just got a mechanical. Vi- oh, first word. Shoot. Um, poised. Oh man, he looked good in that first, look tr- good. first start. Look good, dude. Look good. Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. He looked. NK's good. four seam fastball. I like that action. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's just crazy. I was just with Pittsburgh too, but it's like 20 years ago now. <laughs> cause like, cause when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, Pittsburgh. And I was like, do I know him? And then that's how I usually like associate names in my mind. But now it's like, I'm so friggin' old. <laughs> I don't know anyone. You're still connected. Everyone knows you. Connected, baby. Connected. Grayson Rodriguez. Baltimore. Oh my gosh. Baltimore, right? Um, I don't think I've seen him pitch live, just highlights. And that's always an unfair one. Can I get a skip? Cause I don't want to just go off the highlights. You could skip hundred mile an hour. Skip. Super change. Have you seen his change up? Dynamic. Bugs Bunny, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Cause he's breaking the internet, man. Pitching Ninja got him all over the, the internet going just nasty. Oh, no. All man. right. This next guy, mm. Terry Scooball. Detroit. Mm. Hey. Cy Young. Yeah, you like Detroit that. Stand up. Detroit stand up. My boy Jack Flaherty over there too, man. They they're nice. They're nice. Scoo- hey, he's nasty though. He's nasty. Lefty. So for one word, yeah, it would be nasty. <laughs> nasty, dude. <laughs> that's so that's so generic. <laughs> All right, I got another guy, same division, lefty, Kansas City, Cole Reagans. Oh, Gatlin. His middle name is Gatlin. Cole really? Gatlin Reagans. I watched him yesterday and I'm sitting there. I'm like, this guy's nice. He was in the Chapman trade and he's, yeah. he's a dude. Um, okay. So electric, I would say the same him and Harrison for the giants are very similar guys. You, you saw Harrison throw, I think last night, right? Yeah. He's one and one now. Yeah. He's nice too. Lefties, man. You got another one for me? So that's all I have. I want to go into what I'm calling analytics versus the arm. You got okay. analytics versus the arm on this show, kid. Come on. Right. What are your thoughts on data analytics as it relates to starting pitchers? As it relates to starting pitchers, yeah. 
So funny story, just to give you brief context, I got, I blew up my lat in 2018 and that was right around the time where I started to blow up like with my brand and just kind of go all in because I was away from baseball. And so the one thing that was mainstream at that time was like the data analytics, right? It was jumping on the scene. So, so I just dove head first, man, information overload paralysis by analysis. But right, like at that time, I was like, I don't need to filter any of this. I'm not playing. So I learned a lot about it, got a lot of like, got very familiar with it and then started to try to apply it to my own pitching. And with data analytics, especially when it comes to starting pitching, there's this fine line, man. As an athlete, you have to find flow, right? Like we're so much instinctual athleticism is involved, right? Like that's where you get like top notch freaking athletic ability. So when we're in our head a lot, trying to like articulate a lot of thoughts, especially with data analytics, gives you a lot to think about. It can be very, I know from experience is what I'm saying. I know it could be very, very uh, daunting, but I think a lot of guys actually apply it to their benefit. You're seeing a lot of guys that will, will use data analytics as a source to their, to then gain confidence. Right. So like outings going, whatever, but they know that like the, 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 the tech guy within the organization said his slider is top 1% in all of MLB, right. With like gyroscopic spin. So now he's looking at his stuff, his arsenal. He's like, yeah, I got a freaking nasty one. Like no matter what, no matter what position I'm in, I can always throw that nasty slider and I'll be fine. So it's always that, that, that fine line, right? It's such a good question. Such a good topic. I could talk about it forever, but as an individual listen, it's like, if you're going to apply it, that's great, but learn how much you can articulate and apply in the moment without getting too far away from like your foundational athletic ability. If that's a that's good a answer there. <laughs> My next question. There's all these analytics. Pitchers are throwing harder than ever, but mm. they're throwing fewer innings than ever from a starting pitcher. Mm. What do you attribute that to? What do you mean? They don't need to throw nine anymore. They got donkeys coming out of the pen, dude, all freaking 100 and just saying, hey, here you go. Game's over in the fifth. Give me five. No problem. Just pay those relievers a little bit more. That's my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like – Starting pitching is the is the the best job I think in all sports. You pitch one day, you know, you get the five day routine. It's amazing, but it's true, man. Like the guys that I, I talk about this all the time, the evolution in pitching and just just looking at people's arsenals, man. And it's like used to have guys coming out of the pen, you know, back end guys maybe like seven, eight, nine guys would have two plus pitches, yeah. right? But it was very rare you're getting a reliever with you know two plus three plus. Now guys are coming out. I watched freaking the whole bullpen game for the, the the giants last night and i'm just like everyone's throwing 95 plus everyone's got a secondary that's disgusting and they got a third pitch it's usually like a change up or whatever or a split now splits are coming in and i'm just like what's going on man like it's crazy how good these guys are but you know you say make the same argument for the hitters right testament to, to how much they're evolving as well but yeah man i think uh i would love to see starters go longer I'm a big like starting pitching guy. I like, I like in the watching the playoffs when when it comes down to it. You know those starters gotta gotta get after it in the game in you know, best of seven. Um, but I get it. Like during the regular season, those guys in the bullpen are so good. Like let them take care of it. <laughs> so is it a dying breed? These names I'm gonna throw out: ah. Max Scherzer, ah. Justin Verlander. Like even you go Clemens, Randy Johnson, Greg Maddox, Glavin, 300 wins through a lot of innings. Yeah. The gold standard for the Hall of Fame used to be 300 wins. Yeah. I don't think any of these guys are going to get 300. Kershaw, I don't think he's going to get it. As much as we hope to, right? Yeah. Gosh, you got to pull for him. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe – see, here's the thing within sports – especially in baseball, it's this, right? It, it always finds a way to like come back. And I've kind of seen that, like, it's really interesting. Like we talk and joke about how I'm getting older and it sucks. But the cool thing is like, now that I'm getting older, I get to see the ebbs and flows. Like when I got in, seeing how baseball was played, managed, and then seeing the evolution over time. And I just think, and again, this is all speculation, like who knows what's going to happen. But I, I think there's going to be an issue with the sustainability of pitchers. Uh, especially guys that are throwing hundred miles an hour. That's a lot of, of torque, man. That's a lot of torque on the elbow and the shoulder over 162 games, right? Like that's a lot. And, uh, and I think starters actually, I was talking about this yesterday with Zach Wheeler, Zach Wheeler was pitching. This would have been a great opportunity to hop in this live stream 
stream Zach Wheeler, talk about he's learning right now. Zach Wheeler can go out and throw 100, but he's yeah. learning right now. He can throw 93, 94, get the task done, right? Like accomplish the goal of getting the hitter out and maybe save a little bit. You know, it's April. It's going to be May, then June, then the, the July dog days. You know, it's like he knows that he's playing for a playoff spot, World Series. So you can see the way he's changing the way he pitches. And I think that's going to pick up. So I think we're going to have a big spike. Ooh, a big spike. And then it's going to go back down, more sustainability, maybe. Guys are going to start learning that in order for them to get paid, right? Like they got to sustain their career in the big leagues, not just get there, right? And that's, and that's so hard to do. But, It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but it's really fun to watch, right? As a fan right now, turn on a baseball game and just seeing how good they are. Oh, it's exciting. great. That brings up uh, a good point. So I was in New York from 2010 to 2016, mm-hmm. and that's when the Mets had Matt Harvey, oh, Noah Syndergaard, nice. Jacob DeGroom, and Zach Wheeler. Yeah, they had and Wheeler. I think yeah. Harvey's out of the game. Mm-hmm. I think Syndergaard's out of the game, and DeGroom – He's got a second Tommy John. Yeah, that's tough. I was just saying, I miss watching him pitch. I miss watching Scherzer pitch, man. You said, said his name earlier. I was like, ah, I miss watching those guys pitch. But yeah, dude, the Mets, and they had the, who was the lefty? They had another lefty, right? And the, the year they made it to the World Series in 15. Yeah. And they, they played the Royals. Yeah, Matts, Steven Matts. Yeah. And he was a dog too, man. They had a rotation. And then it was cool because then they left. Well, not Harvey. Harvey was a different case, but like Wheeler left. Matt's left and then they became dudes, right? Like DeGrom obviously became a dude within New York, but like these guys that leave kind of similar to like the OKC situation, right? With Harden and Westbrook, you know, they leave, they become their own, like that's a whole nother conversation, but yeah, it's, it's really cool to, to see that. I didn't know you were in New York that long. I was, hey, yeah. Big Apple. We talk about time moving. I was just going to move for oh. a couple of years and then it was two, then it was three. And then I was like, Wait, I got to get back to the West Coast. Wait a second. These six years just went by in one year. So how does this work? (laughs) (laughs) I hear it. I hear it, man. Time's crazy. So what do you attribute to all the Tommy John surgeries now? Well, so this is it. Uh, Well, I shouldn't say that. Gosh, I don't don't like to speak in absolutes, but this is my opinion, right? So like when I came into the game, the underlying but not – it was the unspoken truth in like pitching specific in, in like major league baseball and all the minor league organizations, right. And affiliated ball that the secret was like the harder you threw, the more of an opportunity you were going to get. But all while the coaches and the instructors and everyone who worked with you within the organization would say, don't worry about velocity, worry about a command, you know, and like phone, like fine tune your pitches and all these other things become a pitcher, you know, like after all that saying, like now the secret I think got out, Right. Like then right around that 2018, seven or maybe 16, 17, 18, where, where people started really seeing the increase in velocity. Right. Like that is where I think everyone goes, all right, now I'm going to train and I'm going to adapt my body to be able to throw this hard. Right. And this is what I talked about earlier, too, is like maybe the human body is only equipped and able to handle so much for a short amount of time. And then it's going to, you know, do what it's saying. I blew out my lat. I blew up my elbow, dude. I had some surgeries along my career. I kind of know, you know, like at a certain point you can do everything right and you can take care of your body, you know, but it's like, sometimes it just goes, man. Sometimes it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't want to work. Other time is undefeated. I'll tell you what. So I think now with this, this kind of where we're at in baseball with everyone like going, okay, like in order for me to accomplish my dream of being a major league baseball player, a pitcher, I need to throw as hard as humanly possible, essentially, right? So then they go out and they do it, they train their body, they do it. And then like, who knows, they get there. And then they go, well, in order for me to stay here, I still have to throw, you know, x hard, and they have to always continuously impress. That's the thing with with sports, right? Like, everyone remembers what you've done for them lately, right? So how good were you in your last appearance, right? So it's like, there's never ending, like, can't let the foot off the gas. And I think that's where you're going to see like this uptick in injuries. But at the same time, like these, these organizations are kind of in this understanding that like bullpen arms right now are a dime a dozen, you know, like next guy up, they bring a guy up from double a hundred miles an hour out of the pen. Here we go. Right. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. But so that's, that's where I think there's this disconnect, right? So like owners will think like, okay, we got this whole farm system full of essentially like the same guys that throw hard or whatever. We'll bring these guys through until they've 
until they go next guy up everyone's throwing so freaking hard everyone's so nasty now it's they have it they have it made right these owners like it's crazy yeah but, and these starters that are coming up in the minors like we'll just put them in the pen break them up faster put them, put them in the, the back of the pen put them in the pen man they'll be even nastier you know <laughs> that's what that's what's also fun about the playoffs time we were saying earlier is like when the starters then get into that situation where they can come out of the pen, right? Like the bum gardener of 2014. Oh, that was so good. Now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, shoot, if I ever need motivation for a day, I just go on YouTube and I type in 2014 bum gardener game seven. Give me it. I was so nervous for him as he was walking out. Oh man. How could you? I was like, can he keep it up? Like he's done it all series. They've got to figure him out. This is the time they're going to figure him out. You know what's funny too? So 2014 was my, I think, after my fourth year of pro ball. And and it it took me just being a fan again to watch and just remember the simple truth that when you're good, like hitters don't stand a chance, man. Like, right? Like we always, as pitchers, it's so mental, right? Like we always dread that barrel and we stay up. We can't sleep at night sometimes because we hear all these barrels in our, you know, in our head. And it's like, ah, And so we subconsciously tie this like hitters are really good dynamic to this kind of mental approach. But, and then you watch a guy like Bumgarner who comes in and let's be honest, right? Like Bumgarner in his day could throw it up hundred miles an hour. And he was, when he got drafted, I think he was like a a hard, hard throwing guy, right? Like when he got drafted out of high school and, uh, and then you see him in the world series, 92, 93, but just, putting it where he wants it with the intent right the freaking like i'm gonna come get you you know what i'm saying that dying breed right and it's not about stuff in that moment and it sometimes typically isn't in october not about stuff it's just grit how much you want it you know just lay it on the line oh man yeah i'm I'm ready to go get a 50 piece for you for sure dude we're we're fired up we're fired up over here come on all right well sticking with baseball and sticking with pitching I want to hear, give me your top three starting pitching staffs this year. doesn't have to be in order. Just talk about some of the pitching staffs you like. Um, okay, so I said Tigers earlier. Yeah. Um, but now now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I can't think of the other third. So you said you said Scooble, uh, the Flaherty, the guy that I just watched. Now I'm going through the box scores. I think they had a doubleheader today. Or Shelby Miller's on there too. I I like the Tigers rotation, dude. Um, Unfortunately, I don't like the Mets rotation. (laughs) No, I don't either. Oh, shoot. Um, I mean, how could you not, how could you not ask that question? And how can I not respond with Dodgers, like in a drop of a hat? You know what I'm saying? Like, I I didn't want to go there, but they're nasty. Orioles got a staff. Orioles got a good pen too, man. I'm just going through all these box scores. Philly, you um, mentioned Philly earlier. Aaron Nola, Wheeler. Yeah, Philly. I like. I oh my gosh, World Series last year, Arizona Diamondbacks. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good staff. Yeah, Phillies for sure. Phillies kind of off to a slow start. Yeah. Um, Padres, right? Padres got a killer staff. Uh, We're West Coast pod, so I got to throw out the Mariners, Castilla, oh, hey, Gilbert hey. with that splitty. Those guys are nasty. Those guys are nasty. Mariners got it figured out. Yeah. Um, the Braves always, I, I, I would always throw them up there. Um, gosh, what was I just going to say? The, wh- who, who am I missing with Texas? Everyone's like Scherzer and DeGrom are down. Montgomery didn't sign back. Oh, I mean, man, I'm drawing all I know about Texas is they're big bats. <laughs> yeah, right? All I know. I, I, I went to yeah, the World Series last year. And they yeah. just hit top to bottom in that order. Oh, you can throw me out there. Oh, and the office will put up more numbers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, speaking of throwing you out there, I saw your clip on Instagram. You and your boy saying, hey, tag up big three, Caitlin Clark. She can win with anyone. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, I think she could. <laughs> Enough of this baseball talk. Let's transition. Come on. Let's give me some basketball. Let me give me some hoops. Give me some Caitlin right. Clark. Did you see the viewers on that? On that? On that game, yeah. like broke all the college basketball records. Yeah. So good for the game. Now final four. She's mm. going against Paige. Mm. Paige Robinson on UConn. Everyone forgot about Paige because oh. she got hurt last year. Yeah. But like 
Paige is coming for that crown. She's Paige nice. Work out. She's nice, dude. She Paige Buckets. Could you? I mean, can you have a better nickname? No, you can't. <laughs> it's awesome. It's oh man, I watched that 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 uh that Iowa LSU game, man. I watched that whole thing, and that's that's probably the most impressive performance I've seen on a basketball court. I mean, like it's tough, right? Because we watch Steph Curry and Clay and you know all that, but like a, a single performance on a basketball court with what's at stake, you know, there, like her legacy on the line. Like people don't realize that, right? Like there's it's a basketball game. There's so much to it there. And like, holy smoke, she was impressive. Oh. And the women's game is almost just as exciting or more exciting than men's game. Like, think of all the people they're putting out, like what South Carolina can do. Oh, my Don God. Haley has turned that program inside and out. You've this got is- Juju on USC. She's got that Mamba Kobe mentality. Oh, my gosh. The girl for US, uh, UCLA, too, was like six, seven, six, eight. You know, like, I'm like, what? The world is crazy. <laughs> it is. It's so crazy. I mean, this was, how about this? This is the first year I think I can say with a straight face. It's truth. I watch more college women's basketball than I did men's. Yeah. And it was great. <laughs> this was. I, mean, I can say that last year in the tournament, I turned to women's basketball and I kept it there. And I yeah. enjoyed it. Oh, and did I you? started following the stars. And then this oh, year I'm like, Oh, she's back. She's back. Look out yeah. for this kid. Man, I used to be so plugged into to college hoops, man. And then that's one thing that I'd say as soon as I became a freaking stupid baseball player, <laughs> I disconnected from college hoops, man. And I and I just I saw Duke lost the other day. That used to be my team. Yeah. That was tough. But yeah, I don't even like it's crazy looking at the the tournament bracket, you know, online and just being like, wow, this is like I used to be the kid that would fill out. 80 brackets i used to stay home from school that thursday and friday you know watch the first round oh man those were the days now i'm like shoot what am i doing (laughs) oh but those are fun times too i never realized it like having spring training on with the tournament first second round so it's like you wake up in the morning it's like boom coffee games locked yeah and then it's during that time where basketball starts to matter nba NBA starts to yeah, start in like a week now. Like, and there's a point in March where I forget about the NBA because I'm just it's spring training, it's March Madness. So much going on. And I'm like, wait a minute, the NBA start playoffs start in like a week and a half. I did the same thing the other day, and it, I like kind of panicked because I was like, shoot, are the Warriors even going to make it? Because I saw the Rockets went off and won what 15 straight, 12 straight, yeah. or something crazy, and now they're playing them right now. Oh, there's a lot going on. This is a good time to be a sports fan. Are you an NFL guy? I am Niners. I'm still gutted from that Super Bowl loss. Yeah, yeah. I tuned in there. I'm not a huge football guy, but I'm I'm a Niners guy. I would say I can I can hold my own in a conversation. It was tough to watch. I I just you know, I we have it so good as Bay Area fans though. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have it so good. But I, you could say the same thing for Kansas City. So it's all good. <laughs> 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 oh, we have it good, man. I think I think. What do you think about the Warriors? Do you think the Warriors are – you think we're in a good spot? No, they're in an awful spot. We're in a tough spot. Because we've got to beat the Lakers mm. <laughs> to move on for an opportunity to play either the Kings or the Suns for then an opportunity to play the Nuggets. Oh, and man. Like, I think we've lost, like, nine straight against the Nuggets. Like, we got no chance against the Nuggets. I'll be honest. I don't think they have a chance against freaking L.A. They're too big. I mean, we saw the same thing last year. Like, LeBron and A.D., it's just too much. I think we should have had them last year, though. What's that guy that came off the bench for L.A., dropped, like, a 30-piece in game four or something? Uh, Was it Austin Reeves or was it? No, it was, like, a – can't remember his name dude but it is like one of the games that we i thought we should have won and that would have brought us up 2-1 and then the series would have been totally different i think it was at la he came off the bench remember and he he maybe had like a 25 and then there's a game where jordan Poole shot that like 45 footer at the end of the game oh yeah jordan Poole. (laughs) oh shoot i'm glad we're off that contract i'm glad he got paid but i'm also glad we're off that he's a champion 
He's a I champion. Know. He did some great things for the Warriors. He helped us when we beat Boston. We wouldn't have won that series without I don't him. I think we would have won that without him. Oh, just, oh, switch gears. Talk, talk. Oh, tell me how you like Podzenski's game. Oh, that's me. Yeah. That's me, man. <laughs> that's no way. <laughs> you were more, from what I remember, you were more of a shooter. I, here's my I comment. Mean, you were more like a JJ Redick in my mind. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That odds is more downhill, go to the basket. You were yeah, more that, just come off the screen, pop, pop, pop. Yeah. pop. I just love the way he, play, he just plays hard, dude. I love that. Yeah. You know, like that was uh, that, for me, that was always the one thing that I could control, right? Like you can't really control you coming into a gym and just like, all right, I'm going to drop 50, you know, I'll take 10 threes, they'll go in, no problem. Like you can always control your effort, right? Yeah. So like, I love watching him, man. He just goes all out. Santa Clara. That's right. Draft well. Jalen Williams, Santa Clara for OKC too. <sighs> OKC is good. Yeah. Hey, did Santa Clara recruit you in baseball? Baseball and basketball, I think. I want to think. I want to say that they were one of the ones that were uh, dual sport. If you were to go to college, which college would you have picked at that time? Oh, I committed to Oregon. Oh, you did. You didn't know this story? No. Dude, no. I committed to. Uh, I was the the plan. So I did. I didn't get a dual scholarship, but the plan. And let's preface this whole thing by saying, like, I wanted to sign professionally, right? Like yeah. that was the goal. But I had this plan, like, okay, well, go to Oregon University at Nike at the time, oh, and yeah. I was if I there was going to be an opportunity for me to play hoops mm -hmm. if I wanted to. But that's a lot, you know. That was that would be a lot. Two sports in college, oof. But that would have been so much. Fun. You could do it. Yeah. You know, hey, what's funny is, uh, so I want to say when I, right before I signed with St. Louis, I, say, I think it was 20, would have been the winter of 2015. I was yeah. thinking, I was thinking about, because uh, when I got drafted, like they, when you get signed, they, if you didn't go to college or you have school left over, they'll, they'll pay your scholarship, right? If you ever want to like take it. And I was thinking about doing it and going, going to play hoops. That was that, that was that spot where I was like, ah, oh, this would be the chance. This would yeah. be the time, right? Because I was still somewhat young. And, and basketball, aside from Chris Paul, LeBron James, Steph Curry, it's such a young game. You know, like it's such a – I played men's league last year. It took such a toll on my body, dude. Are oh, we can see that content still popping up? Hey, you, you saw it. I know you I always get that. comments on that, dude. I love you, man. <laughs> you always fire me up with those comments. Come on, man. That's the cool thing. You know, as, as the, you know, the, the jump shot, that's the thing that don't go away. It doesn't go. It never goes away. The, the goes endurance, away. the handles, oh, and the verticality, that all goes away. Verticality goes probably the quickest, right? And then the handles, man. I brought out some tennis balls last year. I watched Steph's whole pregame warm up. I said, okay, I'm getting this thing back. Phil Doherty. Hey, where's he at? Come on, he's got to be yelling at me. Something to do with this juggling thing. I need to be juggling three balls. No, that's that's true. The the, the handles go quick, but the shot don't go. That don't shot go. don't go. Yeah. All right. Want to do? I know to be sense of your time. Want to do a little West Coast swing, and then we'll get you out of here. Oh, tell me what's the West Coast swing. All right, I'm going to ask you five questions, quick shooters. You just say what's on the top of your mind. Oh shoot. Okay. Don't leave me stumped. <laughs> All right. In and out, Shake Shack, or Five Guys? Am I ranking these or just giving you my best? You just give me what you want out of those three. Because when I, okay, I don't say this lightly. I could do an, I could do an hour podcast just on the top five best burgers of all time. And Are any of those in there, top three? In and out is goaded. Yeah. So in and out is, is a different dynamic that people don't understand because it's like, for me, I get in and out when I come back home from the season or, or I did right when I was playing. Cause like, it's like California were, connection. It's just, it's a different emotional, spiritual connection you have with this burger that amplifies it's, it's the way it sits in you, you know? And it's just, man, I'll tell you what though, they got this hidden menu guys listening that never been in and out explore the flying Dutchman. Cause it's, you know, the flying Dutchman where it's just the two patties and the cheese and you can get those for like, I swear, I think it's like a dollar. Really? You get two patties. So what I do is I get a, I get two four by fours. You've seen me eat, so I, I could put it down. I get two four by fours, and I open them up, put four more patties on them, and then I get the other one. So there's, it's two eight by eights, essentially what it comes out to be. But it's like flying Dutchman's goat. One twenty nine, two patties and a slice of cheese. Flying Dutchman, you heard that? Huh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. 
in and out hey five guys is so good <laughs> five guys fries are fire five guys fries are expensive though man in and out's got that cheap fry you know Yo, you're a I minor league to, ball player <laughs> i used to postmates a shake shack burger and postmates shake five shack. guys fries oh, so you five did. guys fries with the shake shack double shack burger Dude. it's awesome. you gotta try it out I, I'm surprised you didn't get in trouble for that. I'm surprised Postmates didn't like cancel your account. They were like, listen, man, you got to pick one. Hey, they want that business. They need that surcharge. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, dude. DoorDash was the best and worst thing ever invented for me because I, I went and played during COVID. I went and played uh, in like Kentucky. And that's when I learned about DoorDash. Oh, I'm screwed now. My life is ruined. The simplicity of it, right? Yeah. What sucks is I'm in a small town right now, Northern California. So it's like if I wanted in and out, I got to get my butt in the car and I got to drive like, you know, 40 minutes or whatever. Can't right. DoorDash that. But Postmates, two different burger hey, chains, that's, that's man. For you. All right. Um, you can only keep one this off season. Draymond Green or Clay Thompson? You keep Draymond. It's so tough, man. I'm, I love, there's nothing more I love than just watching Clay. <laughs> Clay's one of the, one of the one honestly out of everyone in the nba he's just so fun and entertaining to watch right like just his mannerisms and his talent his footwork his catch and shoots like there's so many things to his game but i'll tell you what you watched that game the other night draymond on the court oh, he's a deep he's a difference maker you can't replace that no and how come when he got drafted no one talked about how long his arms are <laughs> you know like like we pushed him all the way back in the draft because he was too short, but he's got like a seven five wingspan. Yeah. I don't like <laughs> how'd that guy get how'd that how no one, you know? But hey. Well, well I think what hurt him was is he stuck around until I think his senior year. Yeah. You know, now like if you're yeah. around your senior year, they automatically assume there's something wrong with you and they take yeah. those young guys that have a higher ceiling. Yeah, I was like that in baseball. Uh, same yeah. way now it's kind of changing a little bit they're actually drafting more like older guys more experienced guys just because shoot talent is all, all time high everywhere athletes Whew, specimens all right you can only choose one throw 100 miles an hour have a nasty slider or have a dominating changeup. so this is okay this is we could we could ah how do you quantify nasty? You know what I'm saying? Are we going to the data analytics and we go on top percentage of swing and miss? You know, like I'm talking like John Smoltz slider in his prime. Oh, you went John Smoltz. Um, so here's the thing. I would say that subjectively based, like when you look at like pitches, right? Like it's not necessarily going to be consistently nasty all the time. Okay. But if you throw a hundred, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. First of all, there's only what select few, like, select few people on the planet that can do that right like the task of that in and of itself um so i, I for me it's always going to be throw 100 i got really close in my career that was that i got 99 Ooh. and i'll tell you what there's not really a better feeling right like it's kind of that same feeling when you're coming down the court and like you know that you don't know what what you're going to do you don't know how you're going to do it but you know it's going in you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying that that internal confidence in it it's the same thing when you throw 100 it just brings about a different level of like conviction inside you and it's just here you go man <laughs> yeah so i'll choose 100 even though i'd like i'd like to choose all three <laughs> if i could all right last question we'll let you out of here if you could go back in time knowing what you know now what would you tell the younger robbie Rowe oh. at 18 just before he gets drafted and he's headed off to start his major league career wow that's such a good question dang that's such a good question and the best part about it is i'm prepped for this answer because <laughs> <laughs> because i've uh I, I i talk about this a lot man and I, look i i am not somebody that ever like thinks about or regrets anything right like life is life man and it's all been a such a big learning experience and i'm i'm so thankful for all of it you know throughout the journey but the one thing that i'd say man is the one thing i'd say is that rob you're good enough you know what i'm saying because i think when i 
when I got in, there was this little subtle, like not doubt, dude, it wasn't, I'm all, I've always been very confident, but it was this like, I need to be better mentality. And it was, and I think that led into like, okay, well, I'm, I guess I'm not good now. And I need to like work hard to, to be good. And that's all like true. But I think it took away, I guess my confidence in the moment at the, you know, when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, like, you know, I was picked high, man, 88th overall, like I was there for a reason. And, uh, and I think somewhere along the way, I, I just kind of lost that, that identity and that sense of confidence, you know, and I, I thought about this a, a few years back, I think I did a podcast on the same, same question. And I just said, like, I would tell myself that I'm good enough. And I don't need to like, try to be anyone that I'm not stay true to who you are. And like, just keep working, man. And it'll all like take care of itself. You know, like, I, it's so tough, man, being an athlete, you know, it's fine in the fine line, the balance of like, all right, like, if, I, if I'm working too hard at something, right, like, I might be getting away from something that, that makes me who I am. Yeah, you know, so it's tricky. But that's such a good question. Oh. I've asked a bunch of successful people like yourself that and it always comes back to the mental side of it. Always like, mental. The mental side of it. Yeah, it's 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 hardly like could you imagine it if you're like hey uh 18 year old Rob, yeah, you gotta bench press more, man. You gotta <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you gotta do more squats, man. <laughs> hey, you gotta get a bow flex, all right, and you, you gotta put in the work. All right, just just stop. You know, what's funny too is man, I, I almost said this publicly when I was talking about what I would tell my younger self, because there's so many like things, right? You could tell like someone back in the we talk about time travel, but uh, I was thinking about like doing a whole podcast or whatever on like, what if I told myself, like, you can play two sports, like you can go do, because when you get older, that's, tell me if I'm wrong, but like, that's something you think about, right? Like oh, when yes. you were at your physical prime, remember when you woke yeah. up in the morning, you weren't sore and you were just like, I can do anything. And yeah. Like basketball in the morning and baseball in the evening. We used to play all the sports throughout the whole day. Now it's like, I play, you know, I play a men's league game. And I'm, I'm done for two days. <laughs> <laughs> we got one game a week <laughs> oh man well hey this has been a blast thank you for coming on definitely yeah. want to have you come back on sometime Dude, let's do it let's do that i want to i want to meet your 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 guy too man a little bum that he didn't get to get to join us that would have been a fun one yeah and uh what we want to do is uh i actually haven't told him this but uh we want to <laughs> take our wives up to healdsburg right um oh. and then we'll have them hang out and we'd love to like catch a bullpen or yeah. like something to do like that <laughs> cool. like, we've always talked about doing like action sports with like yeah. a that or expert like we'd oh. love to like play long toss with you or like you imagine that'd be yeah. a good like content idea like just try that's such a good idea we were talking about this the other day to have a like a competition of like putting other sports athletes in different sports that's good that's good right like seeing yeah. other people just like play di like it's all sports it's all requires a certain amount of athleticism right but it's like baseball but is so your body movement, movement right oh oh man that's that's another, i mean shoot we we could talk about that all day right like how good basketball is for you just just movement quality just movement base right like i would have never been the baseball player i am today if i would have never played basketball you and that's why kids should play sports. multiple sports because you develop different like parts of the body and also sometimes like it's okay to be a role player in one sport and a star in the other that's because then you know how to coexist with everyone right. I need to see. well that's the thing right kids think they got to be the star like if they play oh. the sport right like nah dude just just play it because it's going to it's only going to positively impact your life, right? Cause you're going to learn about a specific type of failure or success. You're going to learn a type. You're going to learn about different types of movement, right? Brain body connection, how to organize differently. You're going to learn about how to sacrifice for the greater good of the team. For the greater good, man. I mean, I'm not passing though. I you, you give me a double team. The shots going up. It's Come on. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, do you want to tell our listeners where they can find you and consume your content? Oh. Where can't you, man? Come on. Got to got to put my face everywhere. I'm on. Let, I'm on let it. him know. MySpace, baby. MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Robbie Rowe, one, two. Robbie with a Y. Holler at your boy. Instagram, TikTok, X now. X Twitter. I still say Twitter. Twitter X. You know, all that good stuff. My podcast is The Robbie Rowe Show. 
podcast. You can find that on wherever you get your podcasts. And I just got this new mic. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak into it. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing for your lighting? It's bad, right? No, no, no. It's, it's, well, like, I just I, noticed. I, 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 see I clearly. I like it. Well, I noticed Google Chrome like does this huge black background blur. Uh, and it's like blurring my beanie because it's, it's black. So that, you know, aside from that, we're cooking. I got, man, my setup's kind of dope. Do you see the jerseys in the background? <laughs> well, I can't see them now, but I've seen them on your other show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lighting's always been something for me because it's like, no matter what I do, I try to find like my quote unquote good side, but it's like, I'm so ugly. I just can't find it. And the lighting doesn't help me ever, you know? And I'm just sitting here grinding with lighting. Just not, it's not working out. I don't think. I think you're looking great. That's all I needed to hear. I wasn't seeking an affirmation from you. <laughs> we're out of here catch us next week catch us anywhere you get your podcast social media it's at big ben k win underscore at big ben k win underscore x TikTok. we went on facebook for my mom and my aunt we're i know right <laughs> we're everywhere <laughs> what's your myspace dude tell me your myspace username That's the only place we are and <laughs> we launch our music on myspace <laughs> All right, man. Hey, all the success. Love okay, catching yeah. up with you. Let's Glad do this again. This was if fun. you're ever down in the LA area, let me know. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm usually pretty good. I just, LA is tough, man. I know. Bless your soul for doing it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm in a small town. I was a small town kid. You know that. Three stoplights, baby. Yeah. Scooter well, we'll swag. We'll up there when we come up to Hillsburg. Hey, if you do come up to Hillsburg, let me know. That I mean, I won't do it on Father's Day, I promise. You know. This is so funny. That's such a good story. I didn't even think about it either. That's hilarious. Yeah, not on Father's Day. But if you do, let me know. And then let's do this again. Is there a way you can like stream a game on this while just talking? Yeah. You can like, do everything you... on this platform. I'll sync up with you offline and show you. All right, bet. All right. Good. See you, dude. Yeah. I've never used this this uh, this platform before, dude. You got to tell me about this. This is sick. You can Brand like, new. Games. You can watch games. Yeah. And just sit here and talk. Yes, and then you just knock like that, and you can let people in the booth. So think about like all those people that are into your content and want to listen. You could monetize your podcast even more than you do now. You could let people dude, in the booth. You can kick them out. Where's this been my whole life? I don't know, man. I've been trying to get a hold of you. You're busy. Oh, uh, shoot. Hey, someone uh, someone did message me, like, I think last year, and they were doing something about, like, I think it was something about stream services and, like, have, have people, like, come in and watch games with you. That's what this is? This is, like, you're going to pull up the game, and then we sit here, and, like, it's all recorded? So there's many use cases for that, but this is one of them. So Eric Burns, Oakland A's, yeah. Joe Manuelli actually thought of this in half moon bay this and they sick. created a platform to do this so on tuesday night they've got a deuces wild show with will clark and eric burns and they literally just watch games and they just talk and banter they just talk and you can just go on to this website and just like sign in and, and watch them yeah so you just go to the ticket and then it's either free or it's a dollar or whatever you click yeah. on you get in and then you're in the booth. And then if you knock and you're lucky enough, they'll let you in. You can talk with Will the Thrill. Dude, this you should have never showed me this. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Yo, I'm going to be like, this is just going to be on now. My whole life is just going to be like live streamed. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> like it's not already. <laughs> I know. Well, That's first, I, I got to issue you apology. I got to issue you one too. So yeah, you go first. And I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> so... Me and my wife were in Healdsburg for a wedding the weekend that I texted you. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hey, man, you know, you want to like hang out on Sunday? <laughs> I forgot it was Father's Day because I was traveling. Was. You know? So I don't want your dad or you mad at me. Yeah, OK, the, the funniest part is like I didn't even like say anything. I didn't even say like, oh, dude, no, it's Father's Day. I was just like, oh, Sunday. Oh, no, I got to do this. And I was like, oh. Oh man, dad, don't watch this. Sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> I my bullpens on it. <laughs>
<laughs> that's good no man i've wanted i wanted to issue you an apology um but you'll have to refresh my memory when we first started texting like a few i want to say before i went to winter ball right because we were yeah. trying to get on this were you sending me text messages with green bubbles was yeah you i was see now it, it gives me like the ultimate excuse tell me if you feel this way if you get a text with green bubbles like there's there's this underlying like truth that you can just you just say i never got it right because wow. it's like it's green bubbles god oh, because i've got a google what are you doing with green bubbles man it's a longer oh. conversation for a different day so yeah. i had to go on my ipad or my imac just to text you like and I you, had, I had an issue with the, yeah. and I text you on my iMac, my iPad. And I got it, right? So here's my thing, all right? So I'm a big Apple Watch guy. I know this has nothing to do with what we're going to be talking about today. But for some reason, I don't get, like, text messages when I'm not in, like, the area of my phone, right, on this if it's, like, an actual Android. So I think that was the issue. So I wanted to issue you an apology. But I'm, I'm happy we're here now. We did it. We're here, man. Let's we do it. it. So everyone just heard our conversation, but now I'm going to officially kick off the show with an yeah. introduction.